Okay. Where we left off, um, the stadium collapsed at the end of the first set of games. Tikaros and Vara are trapped under that collapsed column of stone. Ptolemaeus is outside of the stadium. Adrastos, Agrios, and Ariana are on the inside of the stadium, and Agrios and Ariana were making a severe effort to help people who had been caught on fire by the explosion and then discovered that it was a contagious fire because as they touched and tried to help people, they also became engulfed in flames. And so something that every DM wants at the start of a session, please roll initiative. Oh! <laughs> and... And I will turn on the initiative tracker if you would like to uh, do it inside roll 20. Just click on, push it, put a token on the uh, page. Actually, let me get you on the right page here. That would probably help. Well, I, I rolled it, it with physical dice, so. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. And I rolled really well. I also rolled. All right, 12. well, give me a moment to do one at a time here. And... Uh, <laughs> It, by the way, is this the third time that the party has rolled initiative ever, like, as a party? I think so. It might be, yeah. Fair I'm such Everybody a gentle together, DM. Yeah. What can I say? We just uh, talk too see. much, so you can't make us fight things. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Adrastos, what did you get? 11. All right, if it will let me put that in here. Awesome. Oh, it shows yours on here as 11. Okay. It took yours after all. Uh, Agrios. 12. How did it take it? I rolled it with physical dice. Now I'm really freaked out. I don't know, but it showed yeah, up here and it had oh, 11, and it freaked too. me Go out, too. Goblins I'm are sorry. 11. What was yours, Agrios? <laughs> Wait, how did, how did I get... Oh, wow, okay, I see. Agrios, what was yours? Uh, 12. 12. Okay, so here's what I'm showing on here right now. Uh, let me, I have Tikaros at 13, Agrios at 12, Goblins, Goblins shouldn't be on there, that's an old one. <laughs> there are no Goblins. That's what there are I was no goblins. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like a Monday uh. for me. Uh, Ariana <laughs> is 7, Ptolemaeus I, I is 3. I actually rolled, a, I don't know how that 7 got there, I didn't touch anything, um, but I rolled a 19. All right. Must I don't know what's going on with roll. Before. It's I'm a character. carried on from the yeah. last combat. So, yeah. um, but you could keep mine the same. <laughs> Is it better hey, than what you want? Rolled? No, it's the same thing. I rolled in that one the third time in a row. In oh, nice. Tolly. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Things, oh. things are not well. I, I talk, I talk, I don't way. fight. And Tam, to be fair, Tikaros should be a six. No, <laughs> Wow, we are just bad. You know what? Today, guys. I'm not. Zero, I'm zero. not using the the damned round counter and roll twenty again. <laughs> Next, <laughs> time, I'm just gonna write it down on paper. <laughs> it took longer than it does to write it down. So, excellent. All right. So what we have at the moment is I have added a Theros into that uh, counter the universe basically. Uh, at one, so it'll be at the end of all this. And the reason we're having yeah. to do this is several people are in peril. Ariana and Agrios, Tikros and Vara. Oh, pardon me, and Adrastos, not Agrios. No, it is Agrios. You guys are on fire, and the other two are, are being crushed under rocks. So I think yeah, it's a I'm good thing fire. to do this in order. Yes. I You've lived as long as I have. You'll learn that the fire is always in some kind of peril. I, I promise I will get in some sort of order as we go along tonight. <laughs> I don't know when, but at some point during this session, I will start DMing like a DM, and it'll be awesome. <laughs> Just bear with me until then. Uh, Ariana, you are on fire. What would you like to do? Uh, can I put myself out? Uh, you can attempt to. I think you attempted to last session, and you found that the more you touched, the fire spread. Oh, good. Um, suppose there's any water anywhere. Like a Gatorade jug, perhaps. <laughs> there is not. There is not presently, unless you are carrying water on your person, which you may well uh, be. Yeah, not likely. Um, 
are actually at the last at the end of last session i took some water skins and tried to pour it on my fire and it didn't work i don't know oh, if you that is true that. it expanded Probably. actually yes it actually yeah. made the fire worse yes well what are all let's <laughs> guess guess you just remembered they have the lucky feet don't mind me um anyway uh i are the, is there anybody that's like crushed under something uh, well, you, you don't know where Vara and Tikaros are, so meta-wise, yeah. yes, but as to your knowledge, you're not sure. Seeing how much of the stadium has collapsed, which you can kind of see in Roll20, there oh, were yeah. people in those seats. Uh, there are people running around okay. on fire, but yes, there are probably people crushed. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of, yeah, I guess my question, so... Uh, I'm not the worst person to go first. It's okay. Apparently, we're all a little off. Well, at least Ham and I are off today, if anybody is. Um, <laughs> we were, remind me, we were planning on trying to find Vara, and Tikaros and Ptolemaeus. Because I, I knew they had gone over there. Ptolemaeus oh. had made a sound using thaumaturgy like the horn Agrios had. Uh, to let you all know that there was trouble, but all you could tell was you heard the horn. You don't know exactly where it came from. And okay. I do remember when you shouted that Vara and Tigros had gone over here, Adrastos was now digging through rubble. Right. Got it. Uh, okay. I am, just as a test, going to give myself one point of lay on hands. Okay. And if that doesn't put the fire out, I am going to start running, um, trying not to touch anything to try to find an entrance to get behind the rubble. All right. Well, it will heal you for one point. Uh, you can go ahead and do a search, uh, which I will allow either investigation or perception, depending on how detailed this search is. Sure. But since you are presently burning, I'm going to make you do that at disadvantage. Sure. I'll just do perception. She's not looking too terribly closely. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 14 and a 15. Um, and so the 14 with perception is going to be a 17. All right. As you look around... You can see where the stones have collapsed over and there was an exit here because that's where they that's where they were heading to look for people. So there may be a, a small gap you can see. It's not going to be something you can just climb into. Uh, okay. it's, it's a small creature probably could. So if you can find a halfling and shove them through, they might make it. But uh, it's uh, it's going to be tight. But is that the end of your turn for the moment? Sure is. Uh, you are going to take, well, that health you just gave yourself, you're going to take one point of fire damage awesome. as you continue to burn. And uh, I actually missed somebody on the uh, order, uh, so we're going to go out of order this time in Vara. Oh. You and Tikaros are trapped in the same gap space underneath these stones, um, but you are trapped under a lot of rock. Nice. I love it. Um, so first off, just a general quick look, is Tikaros, okay, are they alive? Are they there? Are they responsive? I would just kind of be focused on whether or not they're fine. Tikaros, I assume, I, if I remember correctly, you are conscious. You did not lose all your conscious. hit points. Yep, she's conscious. You can see her, but maybe, Vara, you would see... You know, she's a little bit ditzy, right? But she has a vacantness in her eyes that you have not perhaps seen so badly before. And she's almost just catatonic in appearance. Not great. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and use Gust of Wind, maybe? We'll see, that might be chaotic, but um, Bar is fine with that. Um, a line of strong wind, 60 feet and 10 feet wide, blast from you in a direction you choose. So if, if I assume if I'm kind of like trapped under it some way, I'm just, I'm basically just trying to blast all of the rock off the top of us. Um, 
with gust of wind. Well, Ptolemaeus looks like he has something urgently to say in this moment, but yes. she stated her action, but go ahead, Ptolemaeus. <laughs> Out of character, I think you're still in the magic, magic nullifying field. Oh, that's so true. Would I have realized that? Uh, can, I will say that you're a bit in shock from having a uh, building collapse on you. Um, yeah, but... I don't think Vara would have realized that yet, so. Um, she's going to. You're about it. to. <laughs> cool. Does it take the spell slot? Yes, it does. But uh, anyway, you're casting Gust of Wind, correct? I sure am. Ptolemaeus and uh, Ariana, because you are the closest to the stones in your group. Suddenly, you hear a loud whistling noise and dust blows upward for just a moment. And then, kind of like uh, someone playing a band instrument and it was jerked out of their mouth, the sound just stops. Now you know where I am. Works <laughs> up. Hey, that's, that's worth the spell slot. There you go. I like but it. I want, to be, I want to be clear. You were casting the spell. It was, circuit, it was working and then suddenly just cut off. Okay, good to know. All right. And with that, oh, wait, Agrios, yeah, my lay on hands work? Yes, it did. Oh, forgot about the right. anti magic field. Agrio, sure. So if, uh, if water did not put out the fire, I want to look around and see is, is there a lot of like dirt around or something like that? You are in the middle of a stadium with a track and wrestling pits. Absolutely. There is dirt, grass, whatever you I want gonna try and scoop up dirt and just try and smother it out with dirt if I all can. right and um, you find that this is successful you are able to dampen it as long as you keep the dirt on it long enough and you can scrape it off when the dirt falls to the ground and is again exposed to air little flames shoot up but you get it off your skin um yeah, he's going to, I guess, he would try and shout to everyone. Uh, once again, using Thaumaturgy to try and shout over at the end because um, I'm assuming there's a lot of noise around. Try it's scraping screaming. it off with dirt. All right. Addressed us. First, I'll unmute. Um, so what I would like to do is when I saw that burst and that, uh, dust, cause I'm in the rubble trying to dig through, um, I would immediately go to that and start digging there. So I'm going to start okay. like moving rocks, trying to open that up in, in a way so as not to make it collapse worse, but okay. in a way that I can get in and try to get someone out. All right. Uh, give me an athletics check, and let's see how well you are at this. Be, understand right. that you are being mindful of what you are doing. Yeah. Fifteen. You begin moving stones out of the way. Things shift a little bit, but you're able to kind of navigate your way. You're not sure where you're going. You see rock after rock after rock, but you know something's under there because okay. the wind came from this direction. It's going and to I'm going to shout to out, take. I'm going to shout out, Vara, Tikros, can you hear me? And I'm going to ask for a uh, perception check from Vara and Tikros. Probably not, with a two. All right. Checks out. 14. You hear something, Vara, and it, it sounds a bit like, a name it, it's but it's very muffled gotcha i'll just start shouting but i will give you a direction that you can tell it's coming from your right hand side somewhere cool i will shout in that general direction <laughs> right. if i can get that reaction All right tikaros tikaros is in trouble she in this immediate aftermath of explosion and being trapped by rubble she is completely triggered by some kind of past trauma, and she is literally just vacant face. Um, Vara, you'd be able to see this, just completely unresponsive if you try and get in her face. And 
she's just whispering one word kind of intermittently over and over. Tavi. All right. Ptolemaeus. Okay. Um, can I keep in track of everything? I'm outside of the, the, the Colosseum. Ariana, Adrastos, and Agrios are inside the Colosseum, and then the stands collapsed, and Var and Tikaros are on, in the stands that collapsed. Yes. Correct? Are there people running around, like, leave, kind of, like, trying to escape around on my side there, of things? They, they can't really... The nearest stairs are going to be a pretty good distance away from you, the nearest exits. Uh, and people are not trying to come down the rocks because there's still flames at the top of the rocks. So there are people running around trying to get places, and it's a mess. It's a shambles. You may have a couple of people fall down the stones. It's, it's, it's a mess. What is it you're looking for? And I can tune in on that a little better. I'm looking for whether or not um, the rubble in front of me seems to be... Uh a doable kind of like a rescue attempt if I try to convince people around me to help me with it. All right. Give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, that is a 16. You look at it and you see where the dust had come out. You kind of, you, you've got that rational mind. You've looked at the architecture. You've seen these places before and you realize there's, there's still some of the beam left up there that was supporting this. So, yeah, if you could get some of the rocks out of the way, you may be able to pull someone out. Okay. Um, if knowing that, can I'll use, I'll kind of use a thaumaturgy and kind of speak out into the ether, hoping, hoping people can listen around me. I'll just be like, please, anybody, your fellow people are trapped. Trapped within those stands. The beams are still stable. We just need to move those rocks. Please help me in this endeavor. And could I roll a pers uh, persuasion for that? Roll a persuasion, please. That is actually a natural 20. That is, that is incredible. That's and a 27. You feel a hand on your shoulder, and it is a very large hand. And then it steps forward, and this Minotaur, it takes you a moment to recognize it's the Minotaur that just won the event inside. Apparently, he had his, made his way around. And he goes, I will handle this little man. And he walks in and grabs a rock and just picks up and starts pulling the rocks out of the way. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, well, yeah. I think that's it my, right. for my turn. All right. As you are watching, you know, waiting and seeing this guy go, I assume your attention might kind of wander around and look over the stadium and see what's happening. You yeah. realize the mages who are walking around the top of the stadium, keeping the magic field in place, they're still there, and they're still holding up the magic field through all of this, the magic dampening field. But then something catches your eye. It's like almost a shooting star. And it arcs and arcs up over the center of the stadium. And then you see what appears to be lightning. And the stars behind light up in the symbol of Keranos. And it begins to rain. And as the rain falls down upon the stadium, the flames shout up higher and begin to engulf more people as they expand across the stadium. Vara. <laughs> Not good. Um, let's see. Um, I'm just going to go ahead. I can see that Tikaris is kind of not in the best state of mind. and My magic is not doing the best. Um, so I'm just 
going to hope with my pitiful little strength that maybe I can kind of lift the rock up a little bit to where they can maybe rustle out. Okay. So you're kind of trying to fight your way through and all as you can hear the noises of people pulling stones trying to, to get you out of the way. You can also hear the screaming outside, of course. Yeah, things are bad. Um, yeah, so I, I would just kind of, Tigros, Tigros, come on. Um, I, 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 know, I know things are not good for you right now, but they, they won't get any better uh, under the rocks here. I, I'm going to try to lift, and I, I hear some people on the other side. Can you try to squeeze through? You're a bit smaller than I am. I will try to just kind of sheer strength get the uh, rocks out of the way. All right. Give me a strength check. Will do. That's a seven. <laughs> Bora is not very strong. <laughs> no. You are pushing on normal. rocks, and unfortunately, you move a rock that causes part of the space that you're in to collapse. Oh, nice. And pinning you in a smaller area, and the area fills with dust and you're coughing and, and gasping for air, but you, you're stuck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Ariana. Uh, heeding Agrios's suggestion, uh, she's going to stop, drop, and roll, and uh, yeah, try to cover it all up, any fire with dirt to try to replicate what he did. Okay, so you're able to rough around in this. And it, the dirt gets the fire off of you, but again, the grass and area around flames. Mm -hmm. So whatever this is, yes, you may be able to get it off your skin, but it is not permanently dampening it. As soon as it is exposed to air again through somebody kicking over the dirt, it flames right back up. Hmm. Interesting. But try to make a mental note of that. Uh, right. And uh, yeah, I'll go help Adrastos um, where he's pulling rocks. Okay. Agrios, you've successfully damped your flames. What would you like to do? Yes. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to try and get the rocks off of, uh, off of my friends. Um, okay, so all three of you are digging at this now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yep. All right. I think with all three of you going together, I'm going to roll back to Adrastos and I'm going to give the option for which one of you gets to roll for your strength check on this and you will get advantage. So between the three of you, who wants to roll the die? Oh, if, if that's how that's going, could I instead give guidance to whoever is making the roll? Absolutely. All right. I will cast guidance and whoever it is gets a D4. Ariana Adastro, to... Adrastos, who is rolling the die. Ari, you and I are both pretty buff. How buff are you? I'm I'm plus two. Okay. I'm plus three. Yeah, go for it. Oh. Yeah, I'll 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 aid. Okay. Do you have more agrios? Are you higher? Uh no, I'm just also plus three. I thought oh, yeah. Adrastos. Yeah, no, you and I have the same strength, I think. Oh. I you are part it. horse, so yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. All right, so is this just strength or is it athletics? I'll let you do athletics on this with advantage and with the uh, bonuses Agrius give you there. Right. So this should be so, an awesome roll. I hope. Yeah, advantage. <laughs> Damn it! Now you if it's if it's a one, Guidance. it should still be an awesome roll. <laughs> Guidance is a D four. Guidance is a D four. That adds to it. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. Oh my soul. 27. Yes. All right. You, with the three of you together, you're grabbing rocks, handing them back. One of you's taking them and throwing them over the shoulder. So you're just digging this whole area out. And I would also like find... to note just for image, Adrastos yes. is still oiled and naked. <laughs> oh, I, was, I, I definitely wanted to point that out because last session it was Ariana and Agrios running around nude, and this time it's Adrastos. <laughs> you just felt, you just missed out last time, clearly. Clearly. So from your side, Adrastos, you pull a part up, out a stone and you see Vara's face staring back at you. Okay. Um... 
I will immediately get my body in such a way that I'm making like a place where she can walk under and I'm like, is Tikros with you? Yes, um, but she's a, she's a bit catatonic at the moment. I think she's, she might be having a panic attack. Um, <sighs> I might need to help her. Of course, I'll hold this as long as I can. Okay. I can grab her as well. All right. As you uh, are someone. assisting Vara, Tikros is still, it's her turn, but I know that she's still in her catatonic state. The rocks move beside you, Tikaros, and a hand reaches in, grabs your arm. It's this sinewy arm that, because of the rainwater that is collected on this furry arm, it almost looks like a silver strand to you. And it reaches in and pulls you out, and this deep voice says, You're very lucky. I am lucky. And I try and scramble out with the hand. Ptolemaeus, you see as this Minotaur helps pull Tikaros out. And Ptolemaeus, you're up. Uh yeah, immediately I'll just I'll just kind of look over uh Tikaros and I'll just be like, is everything all right? Are you hurt? Where's Vara? Vara, she's trapped as well, but I think we have help. Okay, all right. Um, I'll look over Ish, like the rubble and everything. She's like badly cut, bruised, and whatnot. Yes. Oh, she would be bloodied, completely bloodied, okay. looking awful. One hundred percent going to second level cure wounds. Oh. As I'm, I'm doing all this, and I will do one of these things, and that is okay. I think. Ah, uh, da 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 da. It's uh, 8 plus 3 plus 3. Why do I not? 14. 14. Amazing. Math is hard. Math is hard, you know. <laughs> Math is hard. It shouldn't be for me, but... Oh, it's just, oh. Amazing. <laughs> it's, it's one of those days, man. One of those days. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Oh, Tikaros just... She just falls into your arms with a little shower of sparks that come up between you as you do this. And she just starts sobbing into your arms. It's, it's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. And I'll try to lead her down the rocks and nod at the Minotaur um, with a silent kind of thank you. He'll nod back at you. And it, it, the timing is great. Just as he nods at you, you hear the cracking of rocks and another section of the stadium collapses. So I am going to need dexterity checks from, well, all of you. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, at least there's a little bit of more of a buffer. Oh, no. <laughs> that was that was check, not save. Uh, it's a save, yeah. I'm going to remember save? that I'm lucky and use one of my luck points. <laughs> awesome. Wait, you gave me inspiration. I'm going to re-roll that. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's for. Oh my god. <laughs> oh that was a that was a three otherwise, and now it's a sixteen. All right. Sixteen. The good. gods of Theros do not want me to die because with my <laughs> zero dexterity, natural twenty. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. With Excellent. my zero dexterity, I rolled a nineteen. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Ptolemaeus? I have a little bit of dexterity, but that's an eighteen. Jeez. All right, that's good. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing fly. I'm seeing people not wanting to answer quickly, so I'm a little world worried. Tikaros, <laughs> Tikaros has well, Kras the player has just remembered that Tikaros has favored by the gods, which allows her to roll two d four, which I'm just doing now to add, nice. and I get to add seven to that roll, so I got a all right. nineteen all up. Thanks oh, to awesome! Favored by the gods, Vara. Seven. No. <laughs> Another seven. <laughs> let me Yay. roll for my. Let me I roll for our Minotaur friend. <laughs> um. Well, our Minotaur friend is in the same boat as you, as he rolled below Ooh. ten as well. So. So most of you get out of the way. You were pulling Vara out, but a section of the building continues to collapse. 
Showering more rocks down on Vara. And Vara, hey, I'm afraid you're going um, to take really some damage quick, from that. Yes. Before you do the damage. Yes. Because I think this is what Adrasus would do. Because I got a natural 20, can I throw Vara out and take the damage instead? Absolutely. You are okay. a hero beyond the damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So heroic. That is going to be 10 bludgeoning damage as rocks fall down on you. Oh, okay. I would, that, I would have had one health. <laughs> so here we go. So this, this, this is actually, I'm glad that this happened now. So here's what happens. <laughs> um, the, as I throw her out and the Colosseum collapses on top of me, I will take a knee under the Colosseum like Atlas holding up the world and use my once prolonged rest ability to go to one instead of zero and hold up the Colosseum because this is not my day to die. <laughs> uh, Vara, oh, um, as, you are, as you are thrown out of this and you roll on the ground to a stop and you turn back and you face, you see Adrastos holding up the pillar of this building. And all you can imagine is Mira. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. All she can imagine is what? My, that, is, Mira. that is the exact same pose that Mira was Oh, in Mira! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The rain, as it continues to fall, is obviously causing some issues, maybe weakening parts of the stadium that were not doing well from the explosion. But the worst part about it is the fire that is now spreading and engulfing all of the people who were still in that section of the stadium. And now it's rolling down with the raindrops into the rocks and onto the field. As the fire seems to like the water, it seems to grow with it and flow with it. So you now have a bed of flames that is moving across the field, threatening more people and cutting off their ability to get out of the stadium. On the far side of the stadium, opposite from where all of you are, are working at the moment, the stars seem to come from the sky and make a form of, well, it's, it's, it's similar to a centaur, but it has the body of a bull instead of that of a horse. A shield forms, and you see yourself facing a 20-foot-tall centaur with a bull's body as Iris steps forward from the side of the stadium makes his way across and takes his shield and cuts a channel across the stadium to stop the flow of the water. He looks up. Mogus, you coward! How dare you do such a thing! Vara, you're up. You're muted. We're all you're muted. muted. <laughs> We're all going. No, no, no. You're touched <laughs> in the head. You're touched. No, no, you're muted. Uh, you're muted. It was uh, the ear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Vara is going to go ahead and try to have address us not where he is currently anymore. Um, let's see. I assume I dude she's a she's she's a magician. And we've got anti-magicians right now. Um I assume wild shape still falls under that because it's still it's my lay on hands. No, it works. does not. Uh, okay, and wild doesn't... shape would still work for you, yes. Yay! I would still okay, well allow wild shape. That's awesome. Well, I would love to wild shape specifically into the starry form of chalice. Uh, okay. Excellent. And then 
Let's see. Do I even have, hold on, pause. I'm not even sure if I have healing spells. I have guidance. I don't know how to heal people. Gosh, what is Mara doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a goof. Okay, no, so no, pause. No, not doing that. No, Mara's like, really hold on, address this. Hold on, one moment. Oh, um, hold on, hold on. Shape of stars. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's Take not your gonna time. Work. It's fine. That's not going to work. Uh, <laughs> That's not good. I, I could put You're a fingerprint on the stones above him if you'd like, if that would that help. That would not be that would not be good. Um <laughs> don't have any like a good berry, that doesn't count. Um just go feed him berries. You got this. Uh, <laughs> great. Let's see. That image is amazing. Gosh, yeah, no, you y'all can all just see Var visibly fit panicking. Um I, I'm just gonna go try to be a hero again, even though it didn't work super well the last time. Um, oh, I'll turn into like some kind of badger. Probably badger. And then can I like try to tunnel or like move the rocks with my badgery self in a way that is helpful to him? Um, well, uh, I guess you um, could try digging some of the rocks off from above him but you will risk uh, getting into the flames because that is where they are at, is in that top part of the stadium. Sure. Do you, how about I, how about do, I you, do draft force again? And I will just simply go try to bear the load for him so he can move. I think I'll do that. So I'll, I'll go swap play. I'll turn into my horsey that looks like a Kelpie. And I will go move maneuver myself under the rock with him to where we can both kind of like kick it off like i'll do like a right. little like hind kick <laughs> nice. all right Oof. all right um let's do a strength or athletics okay. i'll give you your choice on it let me see let me pull my draft horse back up this is so intense are you know. stronger than me <laughs> yes you are much stronger than me well uh, not as the horse though the horse is going to be that's pretty good stats. Yeah, exactly. I meant the. I, I was yeah, oh, I thought you were talking yeah, to Adrastos. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but I rolled in that one, so that's a five. <laughs> Far is really going uh, through it. <laughs> so I turned it to a horse and I kick. And maybe you I kick, don't kick where I think I'm supposed to. You were you were you were trying to kick the rocks, but unfortunately, your foot lands squarely in Adrastos's chest. Yeah. And uh, is that, well, that going to put him down? God, he used such a cool little move and, and stood there and looked all great, I'm, and I went. <laughs> and I was going to second I'm, win too. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to have him take damage from the kick oh, okay. directly. <laughs> But it was, it was a nat one strength, right? It was it was like I no, no, I, it was a you were you putting know? force behind it. But what it is going to do is knock the wind out of him and make him lose his grip. Sure. And so the side of the stadium is going to collapse onto Adrastos. Nice. Great. And oh, I love it. He fortunately is a you know where you knocked him back into is against what's left of the retaining wall there so he's got a little bit of a shelter you're going to take five bludgeoning damage as you are now restrained by the rocks that have fallen okay well you. i was at one Me so or I'm, I'm down both. okay did i take damage as well or no 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 you okay. just kicked so great um <laughs> I feel better if I took damage. No, you don't. That's the best. Okay. <laughs> That's Ariana, fine. <laughs> Ariana, you see Adrastos's face as he is kicked, and you just see everything go. His eyes glass over, and then the rocks fall. I am going to use my channel divinity, which gives me is peerless athlete. So um, I have advantage on athletics and acrobatics. And my carry, push, pull, and drag and lift is doubled. Okay. So I'm going to try to get him out. 
Okay. You saw where he fell. You see the beam that was he was using to support. So let's see if you can lift it okay. and make a she, gap. However, however, Eros is posing. She probably pulls a very similar pose, like a zoom out of her, like a tiny version of him, and then just kind of glows for a second, and then bounds and just tosses a whole bunch of rocks. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna use another lucky on that one. Oh wait, I get advantage. Okay. I just rolled two fours in a row. I am going to use my lucky. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Three fours. Wow. Oh. Can we burn your dice, please? That dice yeah, I'm, go it's, it's going away. Oh my god, get <laughs> out of here. That, that's the one that rolled me, it's rolled, well, it ran out of juice. It rolled 319s and then only rolls fours now. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, well, uh, that's an eight. All right. You charge in to try and lift this, but the rain has made everything so slick that you, you're able to move a couple of rocks, but things just shift, and you are unable to get him out I directly. can use yes. as many luckies in the turn as I want, right? Uh, general, I've never had action. anybody ask that before. They've always gone with one. So it, this, it, could be a, this could be a new house rule here. I'm going to say yes. As long as you've got okay. them, you can use them. Just I have like one left. So if, I, if I forget that in the future, house rule, remind me. Okay. I'm not writing it down <laughs> at the moment. So. Okay. <laughs> Did you roll another four? I rolled a six. It's a ten. <laughs> okay. That was my, my channel divinity. <laughs> Two lucky points and a point of advantage. And I didn't get it. Holy shit. Eurowas is clearly mad at me. I think that's what this says. Yes. Yeah, I think it are means because I've been, asso it's not I've been associating with Mogus and he's he's abandoned me. <laughs> Aros looks over and how dare you mimic me? It's like this. <laughs> <Changes his laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Agrios, you, you see as Ariana runs forward and furiously tries to dig Adrastos out to no avail. Uh, Vara, as much as I admire your sudden turn toward violence, this is, there's a time and a place. Um, uh, and uh, I'm going to try and cast aid on... Can I even see Adrastos anymore? I mean, I'm unconscious, so... He's, un he's under the rocks, so no, you, you know where he's at, but you cannot see him directly, no. Okay, that's not good. Um, th then I'm going to have to try and dig him out as well. I'm very getting very tired of having to dig people out of rocks. But <laughs> so it goes today. Sorry. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm going to try. Uh, give me an athletics. Let's see how it goes. Let's hope you I don't win that one. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that seems to be how things are going right now, doesn't it? Um, okay, let's see if I have anything that I can do to help myself with this. Um, not really. Nope. All right, let's go. That is a uh, athletics. That's a 14. I'm going to give a little credit for that, that you are able to dig out and uh, you are able. Adrastos, what part of your body does he see? Um, what does he dig out? Probably my right arm, because I feel like okay. if I was kicked in the chest and moved back and it fell, that's what yeah. would be forward. I figured it would be right. a foot or an arm. I trusted you with that. I knew you were going to be a good answer. So thank you. I would have said butt. <laughs> tail. Tail just pulling yeah. out by his tail. Now, if the Minotaur was pulling me out, he'd 100% get my tail. <laughs> <laughs> Adrastos, um, I need a death saving throw, please. Okay. I have advantage on death saves because I refuse to die. <laughs> Tonight it may be necessary. <laughs> Um, that's 20. All right. 
Yes. So that's that's two up. Good job. Okay. Tikaros. You have been uh, pulled free of all this. And you see the mess that's going on. And there is a uh, minotaur that looks a little battered, <laughs> covered by some rock. Dolly, we have to get out of here. But he looks hurt. And Vara. Vara. And I don't know where the others are. I'm pretty sure they're still inside. Uh, on the other side of it, at least. Uh, what, what, what would you want to do? I want to... We have to find Vara. Can we dig where I was? And I want to just fumble over and just dig madly where I kind of emerged from, thinking I can magically get to Vara. Uh, you're welcome to dig and see. So uh, we've been doing athletics for everyone else. So give me an athletics. Sure. Oh, that's not bad. 15. 15 All right. for a mad scramble. Eh, eh, eh. All right. You are able to dig. Uh, unfortunately, there's a minute, part of a minotaur body in the way, but you are able to dig out a little bit. <laughs> And in doing so, you actually free up the Minotaur a bit. And groggily, he pushes and moves some of the stone out of the way. Good job. Ptolemaeus. Is there... So with the Minotaur and Tikros digging, and... Va... Is there even some sort of an, an opening or... That we could see like you, almost like a tunnel by now of of all the rocks that we've been digging through or is well there would there was there would have been more but again it collapsed again so i think that's kind of gonna cover up a lot of what was opened before okay i'll i'll just look around and just i'll just be like <sighs> if if you said that var was was being helped on the other side and we oh, we should try to go around. We definitely should try to go around. Um, if we dig any more, the, the rubble's just going to fall again. Okay. I think you're smart, so I don't know what help I can be here. Tolly, I'm a bit messed up. No, it's fine. I've got you. We're, we'll, be all, we'll all be fine. Okay, let's go around. Uh, I'll I'll just look towards the Minotaur and just. Will you accompany us? Perfect segue. Thank you. As you look to the Minotaur and he continues to rise, he looks over towards you, and his eyes are no longer the calm black that you had seen before. Oh shit! Oh. They seem to be red, almost lit up like stars as he forces his way out of the stone and rocks fly and as he stands up he seems larger than he did before almost twice the size and he storms over the top of the rocks and as he reaches the top he yells out a battle cry Arrows! and launches himself towards Iroas. We now have two gods, or their avatars, who are going to be fighting in the midst of you. Vara, you're up. Oh no, oh jeez. <laughs> kind of see this horse like prancing around panically like oh <laughs> i'm making things bad <laughs> um and far is going to so gosh i think she's just really just going to try to be breaking up stone with her kicks and doing it away 
from everyone else, just trying to kind of break it up. Or, you know, I think she's going to try to focus on fire detail. I think she's kind of caught on that this is, um, I mean, she's she's been on ships, so she knows that this is Greek fire um, based on how okay. it's interacting with the water. Um, so I think she's just going to try to be prancing around and making a big fuff and kicking up a bunch of dust and trying to uh, put out as much of the fire as possible. So when people do successfully save her friends, <laughs> um, they do not emerge into a fiery hellscape. That is, that is her goal. All right. So g give me a good idea. Are you tr trying to protect the people in the stands? Trying to protect your friends from catching fire again, or I think friends is more so the focus. I think it's yeah, she's gonna stay in the general area and kind of try to be available to assist, but her assistance hasn't been successful so far. So she's trying to make it to where whenever everyone is able to kind of re meet and be pulled out of rocks and everything, um, that they have a safe place to stand and kind of assess the situation. Okay. Are you still in horse form? Yes. Okay. Very good. I am. I'm, I'm big horse neighing and kicking up dust and, and fluffing about. Okay. As you are assisting people, this minotaur comes up over the top of the rocks and just launches across the sky. Lots of people, you know, even burning, lots of people are like, ah, yeah, I can see Agrius going, yay. <laughs> All right. Ariana. A paw of Adrastos is now visible. Um, I'm going to lay on hands and then just pull. Uh, right. But I think lay on hands is an action, so I won't be able to do a ton, unfortunately. But um, I am going to give him, uh, let's go with uh, 10. All right. Thanks. No problem. The lifeless hand suddenly <laughs> gains a bit of warmth and movement. And I'm gonna I'm gonna grip it really tight and like give him an anchor to pull out and just kind of like brace my feet against the rock so we can pull them out together. All right. Agrios. Um well first of all, Agrios is just freaking out. Loving, loving uh, seeing the two <laughs> gods fighting each other, just duking it out. Um, and then uh, remembers that he's supposed to be doing something. Um, uh, let's see. So, all right. So I have a question. If I were to cast aid and... Uh, make Adrastos one of the targets of the spell. It says that he would, uh, his hit point maximum and current hit points would increase by five for the next eight hours. Would that bring him up? Well, he's up from the lay on hands. Oh, from the lay on hands. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, apparently I was also distracted by the gods. Um, <laughs> So uh, he, he's up, but he is still very much trapped under rocks. The only thing visible is his paw, which Ariana is grasping and pulling on. Oh, uh, hell, I'll help her out. I'll grab his arm and try and wrench him free. Hopefully, right. but not just, hopefully not just break his arm for the effort. But <laughs> uh, Roll me in athletics and let's see if you break his arm. Come on, that one. Snap. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> you come back with a cat's paw in your hand. <laughs> That's a real cat's paw. Uh, uh, that's only going to be a 10. You pull, uh, the rocks shift a little bit, but you are unable to break him free. Damn. Drastos, you feel a tugging on your arm, and uh, it's being pulled on quite hard, but the rocks are holding a lot of force against you. Okay. You don't know so what happened. You were, you were holding these, and all of a sudden, you, you remember seeing a... a, a a horseshoe towards your face and then the next thing you know you're under a pile of rocks so so the way that i fell i'm probably kind of a little folded up so what i'd like to do is try to get my feet underneath me and then just like 
<clears throat> just shoulder flex it up so I could get myself out. All right. Give me an athletics. I will. <laughs> Mother, father. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> you, Does he you, get any you... bonus for us both having hold him? Does he have an anchor? I don't know. Uh, you know what? I... I... I, I really want you guys. I don't want TPK to be Theros party kill. Okay. <laughs> so, it's not. Because, we're just not going to move on until we get Adrastos out. And you, clearly, you got, that's going to take a while. You've got two people helping you. The most. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say have advantage on this. So please roll good. Don't make me regret this. I will try not to make you regret this. <laughs> Dirty 20. Yeah. Good enough. <laughs> Excellent. Christ. So you come bursting out of the rocks, being pulled by Agrios and Adras. And, yeah. Agrios and Ariana by one hand <laughs> as you were jerked out of the. Like, so you are now out. And to uh, your surprise, um, there are two gods fighting. One of them bears resemblance to the. Uh, Minotaur that you were supposed to be fighting earlier, but he seems a lot bigger than you recall. Adrastos has a strange moment in his mind between like, oh no, I was going to fight that and oh, I was going to fight that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tikaros. Uh, Tolly, we've got to be smart like you and go around. And I think I would just Probably, like, she snapped out of the the odd little, you know, trauma trigger she had, and now she's she can function. So she's just going to try and follow Ptolemaeus, whatever direction he thinks is best. So that's that would be her turn next. Okay. Ptolemaeus? Whereas on my side, I, I would see the two gods fighting over there, and I'll be like, that changes a lot of things. Um, maybe we shouldn't be there. And... I am going to m try to move back, uh, lead Tikros back as well, and also, once again, use Thaumaturgy to sound the horn. Kind right. of, yeah, so see, see, see if they, they, they can hear it on that side, and we'll just kind of I would say back a little bit. I, at this point, I would say they definitely can hear it because there's so much more of the stadium that's collapsed. There's not really a wall, per se, between, well, maybe a 10-foot wall, not this huge thing that was there before. So, mm -hmm. All right. The Minotaur that launched, well, we're just going to call him Mogus. Mogus launches himself off of those stones and hits Aroas and sends him backwards rolling onto the ground. The two tussle on the ground for a moment. Iroa stands up, grabs Mogus, picks him up, and hurls him in the direction of the stadium where you guys are standing. Let's see where he hits. He goes sailing overhead to you, and lands in the stands, in the midst of the fire that is ongoing. The rain still continuing to fall. Aroas looks up and, Kyranos, stop the damn rain! And then he charges forward once again to go after Mogus. Fara, you're up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, do geez. this at this point, <laughs> because at this point you're not all in individual danger, okay? So we're going to alternate back and forth between what you guys do and what's happening with the gods so that we don't have to do initiative, 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 because I think that's just going to drag it out at this point. So you are a divided group. Ptolemaeus and Tikaros are on the outside. So Vara, your group's on the inside. So we're going to go with your group since you had the top initiative. What are you guys doing? Well, Vara is going to immediately come out of draft horse form and like run over to address us and oh, i'm so sorry you're you're so noble and kind and i and i messed it all up <laughs> i'm just i'm, I'm oh, just... It, things happen in a panic i i don't blame you 
Cool. And she had, she has like good berries that she'll go ahead and take out <laughs> and just kind of offer to him as, as a, as a olive branch. <laughs> he will, he will, um, take them with, you know, they taste yes. like olives. They're little olive shaped good berries. Right? Yeah. There you there go. You go. <laughs> You you can you can tell from it there is no animosity from aggressors. He's also very distracted right now. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's there's ten, so there's like a little olive branch of ten fairies, and anyone may partake, but it's given specifically to Adrastus. I, I will take one and then I will leave the rest for other people that need them. Each one does a hit point of healing. Um were you looking rough, Bara? Um, I don't look great, no. I'm like, okay. uh, I don't know. If you had to put a number on it, I'm 11 out of 27. So I, I'm, I'm okay, but I'm not. I'm, like, she doesn't look great, but she's she's capable of standing and doing okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw a cure wounds at her, uh, which is, oh, that is a D8. Oh, oh, that's a D10. Learn your dice, Krista. You've only been playing this for 20 years. Get your shit together. <laughs> There we go. Uh, uh, and it's five plus three is eight. Take eight healing. Nice. Uh, and then Adrastos is still looking pretty rough too, right? But we think we're going to start running pretty soon. <laughs> you can think that. Someone's <laughs> going to have to pull Agrios out of what he's doing because now that Adrastos is free, he's fully absorbed in worshipful singing at the side of this holy uh battle no and that's um, okay. i think that's okay i think i think we'll just let you have your moment for a minute <laughs> as we kind of get our bearings to, to clarify what language are you singing in and what are you singing he is singing in the minotaur language um okay and uh i guess it would be more of a war song if anything. All right. Um, Would it be a song that Adrastos recognizes for backstory reasons? Oh. Uh, I, I don't know. Do, well, that's, would you? Well, I'm asking Tam. Would, uh, would that party of Minotaur has been singing this song? This is what I'm, I'm... Because of some things in backstory, I think, yes, you would. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Interesting. I... <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so I've I've touched our shoulder to give her, and then I'm like, hands at shoulders of Adrastos, be like, Victor, we have had our victories for today. Now is time to leave. This is a battle beyond us, and we need to go. Oh, I'm not going to cause trouble. I want to see who wins. Agrios beating Agrios, his spear tell me who wins! <laughs> beating his spear against his shield to keep the beat as he sings. They're, they're like making a rush. The, the rain's still going, right? The rain is still falling, and they are just pummeling each other in the stands. Unfortunately, probably crushed a few people. Yeah, exactly. Um... <laughs> And I, I, will note, run. I will note there are still people burning. Many of them have collapsed. There's probably several, probably 50 to 100 people who have died from flames at this point. Wonderful. Um, Ariana's going to go stand in front of Agrios and in Minotaur say, if you wish to survive to praise him another day, we need to go now. Agrios stops. Has to to consider it for a moment. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna so, tell you, that, I'm gonna ask you to hold that thought because you guys have done a lot in this little bit yeah. of area. So hold that thought for just a moment. Let well, me see what's happening. Thing, yes, absolutely. Real quick, because it, it would have been like, I just wanna see who wins and then he hears the song and any mirth on Adressus' face drops. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's specific. It's specifically the part about the song about uh, Mogus delivering the fallen to Erebos. 
that uh, bothers you the most. Okay. Go on with the rest of the group. <laughs> did, did that work for the backstory? Sure did. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ptolemaeus and Tikaros, you are on the outside of the wall here. You you saw some of what was going on. You saw your Minotaur guy grow and fight, but you can only hear what's happening outside. You hear screaming and rocks crumbling and and the sounds of a big fight going on. Something tells me that we're the, the group inside. There's probably people that are either participating in the fight or really, really invested in the, in the fight. Yeah. I think you should keep doing that horn. That is a very good idea. Keep doing the horn thing, and maybe, maybe our friends will hear it. Let's, in the meantime, find cover. I, I, it's looking like the rain's... Spreading the dancing flames. Yeah. That's not good. Let's look around for cover. Absolutely. I keep doing the horn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Horn. Um, I'll just keep having the horn. I'll, I, I would imagine I'm just kind of like flicking a finger out every single time I want to get the horn out. So then I just kind of forget and I'm looking at it. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Where, I'll just where's get the my horn out again. <laughs> Where's my actual horn, by the way? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I believe it's buried under some rocks. Oh, no. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't had the fun of getting to that point yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I probably hear it and assume that somebody out there has it. <laughs> so, a couple of things happen while the, the battle's going on and you guys are taking your actions here. First off, you hear a shout. Uh, and you recognize the voice as Eurymedes, and he says, Stop the dampening field! Block the rain! Block the rain! God, he has a... <laughs> <laughs> so all of the mages, the magic field has now dropped. And you can see as this force of energy makes a, a small dome over the area, specifically over the part that's burning, and the rain begins to hit, and roll down the sides, and it makes a bit of a torrent as the rain is now funneled off the sides of the stadium, but at least it's not hitting the flames and causing that to spread out any further. Inside, the battle continues between the two gods, and they get up, and they're fighting their way, and they make their way towards the top of the stadium, and they tumble over the edge and fall to the ground fighting in front of Ptolemaeus and Tikaros as they are trying to make their way away. There's this loud boom as these two giant bodies fall, fight, and roll into the house next to you and just decimate that house as they continue to battle. Run, run, we're running now. I, yeah, I instinctually actually just... Um cover Tikros, but at the same time I technically I can't, but then we're out of we're out of turn order because I have an action where I uh I don't even know if it's gonna do anything, but you as the Nyxborn, can I use the cloak of stars? And basically I'm kind of like draped in stars that are very similar to my hair. But it's mm -hmm. almost like something that that's used to to obscure the two of us as we as we continue running. All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, go uh, ahead and run me a stealth check. I'll get back to you in a minute. Yes, Tikaros. Sorry. Just as he, as he does that, and Tikaros knows what this is, she'll just give this big beaming smile at you, Tolly, and she'll do the exact same thing and make it go over you and make it the same color as your hair. Just uh -huh. keep running. Just keep running. <laughs> inside uh the stadium what is our group doing oh agrios uh as you were answering ariana you noticed as the the lights in mogus's eyes kind of as you were playing your music his kind of pulsed and strengthened to the beat of the song that you were doing your words were influencing him and letting him know that he had a follower there who was wanting his victory 
above all else. And then the two fight and fall over the edge. So what would you all like to do now? Ariana has probably noticed Adrastos's face and is like, okay, trying to herd everybody out, but staying <laughs> distinctly in between Adrastos and Agrios, because uh, this is going to be a conversation, if not a fight. So she's just trying to get, every, like, making sure Vara is kind of in between all of them to make sure that she's safe, and then um, then have the rest of kind of herding everybody out. <laughs> Drastos yeah. is not an idiot, so he's going to just turn on his heel and leave. Cool. Farah okay. <laughs> will kind of chase after him and is still trying to doubt and apologize. And... <laughs> yep. he's, he still has a little oil-shaped, oil-formed horse shape uh, in the middle of his chest. I'm like, I'm like fussing yeah. it off. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, it'll be okay. <laughs> oh, we should get you some clothes. <laughs> Agrios is running along. Um, He's he's a little disappointed that he has to leave, uh, but I mean they were already out of sight anyway. And uh, but he's energized still by what he saw. All right. Well, I think we're coming close to a break time, and you are all running. So I am going to. What was your stealth check, Ptolemaeus? And you can do advantage because Tikaros did the same thing to help you. So let's. Uh... <laughs> that is a seventeen. Okay. What kind of place? Where would you hide? Tell me. I, I've got a couple of places in mind, but I want to know what you're looking for to see if they fit. Well, houses won't work, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think instead of instead of specifically hiding in one place, we use use the cover of the night and the the starry cloaks to go from from kind of cover to cover in through like okay. alleys and whatnot as we as we continue just moving forward. Okay, uh, where are the rest of you going to run to? I know you're trying to get out of the stadium. Where are you going to go to after that? Because there's no sign of Ptolemaeus and Tychorus at this point. Should we go back to the to our house? Is that where they're going to where we were staying? Is do we think they would go there? Yes, I think that's typically where we convene. I we we did see that Tikaros got out, right? I don't think I don't know if we saw. Actually, now that I think about it, is you got out first, right, Vara? Uh, yes, I was pulled out. First. I would say you do not know that Tikaros is out. Uh, Shall we run around to the other side and see? Hoofprints. She has very distinctive hoofprints. And I'll, I'll see if I can try to um, find any prints that have been left of them leaving, checking around the, the rock where we were. All right. Uh, that's going to put you right directly where the fight is occurring. Because they are within the houses around that side of the stadium. I'll go Far, with her to keep her safe. Far will take that. <laughs> She'll yeah. say that's fine. She Quick All right. question. Yes. Can I use divine sense right now? Absolutely. It will tell me if there is a celestial fiend or undead. Mm -hmm. Do I sense two celestials? Uh, yes, you do. Two very large okay, cool. celestials. Good. Just and, wanted to make sure. Yep. And uh, <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and then a third and a fourth. Hmm. That could be very good or very bad. Uh, she's going to start looking around to try to see if there's anyone else. <laughs> all right. Uh, now, are all of you going as a group? So I know where everybody's at physically, because that'll help me pinpoint on the map where things are. Uh, yeah. Ptolemaeus yeah. and Tikaros yeah. are like way far away from you guys at this point. That's just all there is to it. But you are back looking at that area. Uh, Vara, give me a survival check as you're looking for tracks. Yay, one of my things. Hopefully I roll well. 
Can I help just to give her advantage since I'm there? Uh, do you have? Yeah, you know what? I do. Yes. I am trained in survival. <laughs> Absolutely. So I have advantage. Yep. Yeehaw. Okay. Well, that first roll was a seventeen, and that one was a ten. So we'll go with the seventeen. All right. Um, there's a lot of mess here. There's a lot of trampling from people. Of the God. There, there are body rolls of the gods that have messed up, but you do see some tracks running away that seem very similar to Tikarosis. But there's also another set that's also from a satire about the same side. So they go off. They're both obviously running. Sure. Uh, they both seem to be, one of them seems to be in the company of someone else. The other one just seems to be running itself. Um, I think I would hope and assume that if Tigros got out, it was due to Ptolemaeus. So I would follow the one with um, both right. friends. Very good. As you are doing this, the fight goes on and destroys a few more houses. And the two of them, as they grow more angry and fight harder, they're putting more into it, and they're now larger. You are seeing these beasts 40 feet tall as they fight each other, and a punch is thrown. Mogus goes backwards into the Colossus, knocking it from its stand. It falls forward onto the edge of the bridge, taking out a section, and it falls into the chasm. At this point, a fine silver rope extends forward and grabs the fists of each of them as they are about to fight and binds them together. The stars take an odd shape. Something, it looks almost like a creature with four arms appears above them in the sky and envelops them. And then they all fade. The rain stops. The night becomes quiet except for the sounds of those crying for those lost and those in pain from the damage they have taken this evening. <laughs> so you've just witnessed a fight between the gods that was apparently broken up by the two gods who try to maintain some sense of order within Theros. Some of you went back to the house. Uh, some of you were running around uh, under stealth. So, Ptolemaeus, Tikaros? Oh, if, if the gods disappeared and, mm -hmm. and there was still, still kind of chaos, but at least we're not in immediate danger, I think my first idea would, would be to tell Tikaros, we should probably head back to the house. It's where we could regroup. And hopefully they'll show up as well. Absolutely. That makes total sense. Let's go. And we, I have stuff to say, just to talk about. Well, you always do. Yeah, I do. Yes. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Yeah. We would have seen like that last bit of the gods, right? As we were I, running, I think, I'm assuming. I don't think yeah. anybody in Akros could have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Since, since the Colossus was visible from all corners of Akros, I would say that you saw everything. Yep. Cool. Back to the house. All right. So all of you, after a bit of hustle bustle and running and getting around uh, the throngs of people who are now displaced and not sure what to do, you make it back to your house, your apartment. My friends there? I know they are not. Ariana's gonna kind of stomp around a little bit, just kind of doing that doing that thing where you're like 
flexing because you want to hit something and you can't hit anything so you're just flexing <laughs> um and just just silently pacing back and forth and just staring at the ground all right anyone else i think adrasos might actually try to get his clothes back <laughs> oh yeah, because he just walked there. Dude. And he he needs he needs a little he needs a little time to himself. So he's gonna head back to what's left of the red room and try to get his stuff back. Okay. So or or the back. I guess the champion apartments wherever he was staying. All right. Okay. So Adrastos is out for a bit. The rest of you. Ara is looking for Tikaros. And they show up at the house a little bit after you guys arrive. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so she's she's kind of pacing around, looking at the house, like walking in and out. And then Tikaros and Tali show up, and she's just, oh, Tikaros, <laughs> I'm so sorry I abandoned you. And then I, and then I kicked a dress just in the chest, and things have been very bad, but I'm just glad you're okay. Oh, and, no, Vara. And she just and runs hug, up and hugs yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, she'll hug. She's not a huge hugger, but she, she will hug in this moment. Ooh. And she'll kind of like motion for Tali to join the hug. <laughs> just be like, I'm. So I'll just hug. I'll just be like, I'm sorry. You kicked a drastus in the chest. It was an accident. Please. <laughs> no. Is everybody okay? Where is Adrastos? Yes. Um. Oh, we just got back to the house. Not. Not too. Not too long ago. Um. Adrastos is still naked. I think so. Um, he's probably changing. Um. Ariana was. Uh. Well, she looks stressed. And I, uh, I'm not sure what Acrius is up to, but but yes, we're all safe, as, sa oh. as safe as we can be. Did you see the gods? Oh wow. yeah! Wow, crazy. Just very close indeed. Oh. Yes. Let's uh, yeah. let's get inside. Let's uh, come up with a plan. Yeah. So the house is the upstairs where you guys are at. The uh, the windows and everything are all open, so all the curtains are open and everything to let air flow through and cool down from the day. I'm gonna cover Adrastos for a moment. Adrastos, as you are making your way to the apartments, <clears throat> you overhear several conversations as you're walking. The conversations uh, are backing back and forth between. Why did Mogus do this? Why did he disrupt the games? Why did he hurt so many people? And why did Karanos make it rain and, and cause things to be worse? What was going on? And did you did you see Clothis and, and Crufix and they they stopped all this, but why are the gods fighting and why are we in the middle of this? Why are the gods mad at us? Is this because is this something we did then that's why Heliod destroyed his own temple? So all these theories are beginning to be put forth as to what's going on, and, and people are quite scared. Okay. Um, Adrastos is very in his head. He hears everything, and it all registers with him, but he's not, he's not in the mood to make anyone feel better right now. He's very single-minded. He's going to go put his clothes back on. He's going to get his stuff, and he's going to regroup with his party. Okay, so this is going to take you almost an hour, probably, to make it there and back without causing a scene. Uh, because as people people see you and you do hear some, you know, comments and they recognize you, but as you said, you're not really paying attention to any of that that's that's going on. So if you're trying to stay low key and be left the I mean, hell alone, if anyone addresses him directly, he'll like talk to them he's not going to be rude but he's definitely going to be like you know just the nod wave move on yeah. kind of thing yeah so people people you know they'll they'll kind of part wave you know and kind of you know yay kind of you know. but it almost seems like they might be a little intimidated to talk to you good that is the vibe i'm giving off <laughs> <laughs> all right so, In contrast yeah. to the unrest of the rest of the city, Agrios has been in a state of divine reverie um, and is currently has currently sequestered himself away with the gift from the high priest of Mogus, 
uh, try once again to puzzle it out and figure out uh, how to receive guidance from these objects. Okay. Um, what's the biggest question on Agrios's mind right now, aside from how do these damn things work? <laughs> the biggest question on Agrios's mind right now. Um, hmm. Are the gods truly responsible for these, these acts of destruction? Okay. As you are doing this and you're fumbling around with these pieces, they fall out of your hand and onto the floor. And it takes a moment, but you recognize the form that they laid out in is a tribal symbol. And the basic of it is, yes. This is incredible. And now, all future uses of this will fall under the rules of augury, so it's got to be more of a uh -huh. choice of something you want to do, but go ahead. <laughs> something I want to do, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you asked me what question is weighing on his yep. mind, so yep. I answered that. Um, and that's when he will gather the things up and run to meet everyone else in a state of excitement. <clears throat> Um, are you, is everything okay, Agrios? Agrios has just burst into the room. Oh, yes. Yes. This, this is a war between the gods. A war to end all wars. Perhaps a war to end all things. And we get to bear witness to it. Oh, what privilege. Perhaps even participate. That sounds dangerous. Agrios. Yes. Yes. But also, we've gone from conspiracy to a full-blown war. Perhaps this was the end goal of whoever was trying to impersonate the gods from before. But who could manipulate the gods? A member of the Pantheon? Another one of the gods? And Agrios is sort of torn between his excitement for this idea of a war between the gods and this very troubling thought that perhaps this is not this is not the, the correct time for such a war. And maybe this is, there's not a just reason for it. Or if, if someone has manipulated it, then to what end? I mean, it's all speculation at this time, but speculatively, if there was someone that could rise to power in some chaos, a usurper. Uh, well, we did have theories about there being involvement or or some kind of interest in the old gods, right? I mean, Ariana asked if I could look into the original Alantan with that thought, so if, if the current gods were to fall, maybe the old gods could rise again. At the, the gods cost themselves. of most of civilization. But if the oh, gods yes. themselves have been deceived, then who may we look to for guidance? How could we possibly, mere mortals, 
discern who is responsible if they could not? Well, we are researchers now. I mean, if not us, then who? Let's go ask questions. Where should we go? Interesting thing is, then we would be going back to Prime and all of the little things that we've all the happenstances that has been happening that, that we could potentially find connection to. For example, the plagues that could have happened to be connected from what the sailors found and the missing village as well. There are threads, but we just need to know how to pull them. Well, what, what gods have we seen involved so far? We have Mogris, obviously. Iroas himself. Iroas Heliod, supposedly. There were four here today. Prufix. Prufix. Who else? Keranos. Keranos with the reins. Keranos. Yes. And possibly a connection between the crows and Perforos. Well, some one of the gods has to have information. I mean, we mentioned who would be benefiting from all of this, right? I mean, I guess Mogus would, in theory, <laughs> the destruction, the chaos. I wouldn't. A Athreos I wouldn't. wouldn't. He doesn't care about death so much as just overseeing the passing. Interestingly enough, I wouldn't think that Mogus would benefit at all. If... Think about it this way, the Pantheon has survived the way it is for so long. If... Mogus stepped out of line in any way, create any sort of chaos that the other gods would not like, it is one god against many. Those odds, well, would make a good story, would make a very dead god as well. Yes, I, I, I don't see any of the gods really benefiting from this, except for ones who have fallen out of power. Neither Mogus those... nor Eoros would win a victory this way. They would not do it in the depths of rumor. About those that haven't actively participated so far. Uh, well, we have, what is her name? The goddess of the sea, Thassa? Something like that? She hasn't participated, but um, it's a bit hard to participate when most of what's been going on is in the cities. We do have a bay, but... What if I'm, gonna have a dras I'm gonna have a Drastos oh. enter at this point. Go ahead, Ptolemais. What a Phoenix. Trickery, right? It would fall quite into his, his domain. I suppose so. What are we discussing? The gods. Seems to be the only topic there is to discuss nowadays. Why? We need to get some kind of bearing on what's going on. And Agrio seems to be thinking that all of this conflict could lead to a war of gods. Hmm. Yes. Uh, so I... you're asking who benefits? Potentially. Simple. The god of death benefits from death. Erebos. And as he says the word Erebos, you hear a venom and a nastiness that you have never heard from Adrastus when he talks about anything, Minotaurs included. Maybe that is, does his speech like for a moment? sort of uh, hit a borderline between being words and being a lionistic, like, snarl. Mm -hmm. The the, the, the boast of Erebos is more like, Erebos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Erebos is a good point. Once again, I don't, I don't know if he 
directly likes to involve himself in death or just is of the underworld? Uh, I mean, one theory we had was the old gods, right? Any god who has fallen out of power is uh, some kind of toppling of, of current structure. Well, I agree to with the... them. Exactly, but while I agree with the fact that Erebos does benefit potentially from death, that death could be found in any sort of war, any mortal war, not a war between gods. But what death is sweeter to something that benefits from it than the death of divinity? The gods think themselves so high above us that they forget. They forget their mortality, their power is tied to those that worship them. Take that away. What are the gods but forgotten memories? Well, regardless of what we could come up with right here, it's theories. Yeah, I don't think we should come to any conclusions in the moment. It's, it's good to talk about this, but... What of the games? They're, they're suspended indefinitely after this, right? They'd have to be. Could only imagine. We should... We should make sure. And... With our... With... Being able to, to be free of, of staying here, we, we definitely should go back and tug on those exact threads that I mentioned. The plague. The missing village. Perhaps any of those could, could lead to clues on who would be impersonating all of this. I agree. Rastos, you make it sound as though we are masters of the gods. We are masters of none but ourselves. But we do not need them. They need us. And with that, he turns and walks out again. Agrios, you saw it yourself. Hold on. Your Does Agrio belief. say, as soon as he hears Agrio say that, he turns around and he's just going to level a punch at Agrio. He has mm. lost his Ooh, patience. Nice. <laughs> sure. Sorry, I didn't hear what Agrio said. What did you say? Agrio said, what you say borders on blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> I like the eye roll there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> blasphemy. Blasphemy, yeah. schmasshole. Blasphemy, blast for you. Oh, exactly. good clerics. Yeah. Oh, well, Says I rolled the a paladin. 20 for my punch. Oh, no. Oh, 20 for your punch? That'll hit, Natural yeah. 20, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, damn. So that is, because I'm not clawing you, that is 8 damage. I'm sorry, not 8 damage. <laughs> uh, 5 damage, forgive me, because on arm strike is 1 damage plus strength. Okay. So even double, that's five. All right. Fair enough. Um, and, and then I will roar after the punch. Blasphemy requires belief. I have to care about the gods to blaspheme against them. They have done, given me nothing but death and pain. The gods mean nothing to me. I will blaspheme until they take the last breath from my body. And then I will tear their throat out in the underworld. Death and pain have made you who you are, Adrastos. They have made you as strong as you are. Can you not see that? Nothing has made me who I am but myself, not the gods. My experience. I have never questioned yours. Do not question mine. I am glad that Mogus speaks through you or whoever does. I am happy for you does not matter for me. Hmm. Believe what you will. Now I will turn it. <laughs> right, regardless of belief, what we need now is rest. 
Yes, we do. Uh, Agrios also storms off. He seems a little perturbed by the whole conversation that just happened. All right. So you have this large room upstairs that you're all staying in. So if you storm <laughs> off, where are you storming off to? I go sleep in the red room. All right, so you're going to leave. Okay. Okay. You so said we have this little upstairs area. Yeah, it's it's about twenty square feet. I mean, it's not too little, but uh, he would probably just leave then. There's not much space to get away. All right, there is the stable outside with the donkey. We covered that last time. At this point, <laughs> he would probably sleep out there right now. All right. Uh, Ariana's probably going to go just sort of quietly leave the room and sit down at the sit down on the front steps and just kind of sit with her head in her hands for a little while just silent okay the jocks are having emotions okay it's <laughs> true <laughs> that roid rage kicking in exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right so that leaves vara Ptolemaeus, and tikaros upstairs what's happening upstairs I'm oh, very that's... tired. Yes, you sh we should get some rest, regardless. I'll yeah. stay up for a little bit longer, but I'm glad everybody's safe. I agree. Not not fun to watch people argue, but I'm glad we have people that. We can watch our um, I'm glad tea. that they at least Would have you like tea. Well, if I'm going to stay up a little bit longer, yes. I don't think I'll be able to go to sleep right away either, so I'll put on some tea. What were you saying? It's, I'd rather have people on our side that have ideals and are willing to fight for them. Yes, the passion is clear. And I, I think that's a good thing, even if it's not towards the same effect yet. Tam, I have a question. Yes. Um, out of character, the orb that I picked up, how big is it? Was it like palm size? It was about the size of a tennis ball. Okay. So, it said kind so, of somewhere between a golf ball and a tennis ball. I'm going to go towards a slightly larger size on it. So it was in that and, little crack that you had seen in the uh, side of the stadium. Okay. Before the explosion, um, I picked up a small dark sphere that doesn't seem too be big enough to cause the explosion that it has. Something tells me that it could potentially be some sort of a premeditated mortal attack to fill the, the spire with whatever, the pillar with whatever it was. Based on previous information, we perceived that it wouldn't be surprising. We tried to warn them. I think in the morning I'd like to go help clear the dead. Well, in the morning, I think I would like to question those that have been preparing the Colosseum, the ones that were around when this could have potentially happened. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yes, back to the Colosseum, definitely. Adrastos might be a good way to get in with that. He probably interact with more of those people. <sighs> lots of work to do. Yes, lots of work. Ooh. And I'll make some tea and I'll kind of, I'll quietly bring a cup to um, Ariana as she sits on the steps. I won't say anything to her unless she says anything to me, but I'll, I'll hand her a cup of tea and then walk back upstairs. 
<laughs> um, Ariana will take it um, and just kind of give a very sad smile and a nod and sip it quietly. Cool. Yeah, she'll Var will kind of put a hand on your shoulder and squeeze and then walk away. As you make your way back up, Ara, uh, you hear a noise, some kind of a shuffling and almost a, a light scratching like um like claws on stone coming from the window. It's not loud. Just a little something. Go investigate. Hope it's not a rat. I don't like rats. You pull back the the edge of the the drapes, which were covering just that part of the open window, and there sits a small metallic owl. And it turns its head towards you, and with one eye, it blinks. And there's kind of a mechanical as it blinks its eye. I will try to fumble around and open the window. Figure that one out. You know, it's it's open. It's just sitting there on the rail. Oh, so. it's just sitting there. Oh. Yeah. Um, hello. It'll nod. Oh, hurt. Um, owls. I are you a messenger of sorts? And it takes a couple of steps to the side and then back. And it's just kind of shuffling and turns its head and looks at you. Hmm. Um, come inside. Uh, I, I have others upstairs. If you will. And it, it sticks one of its talons up in the air and just kind of holds it there. Uh, and Vara will like try to like falconry, like give it a place to stand. You put your you put your arm out and it hops over onto your arm. Perfect. And I will bring it upstairs and I'll call I'll call out to Ariana and say, um, Ariana, um, we have a visitor if you want to come upstairs. I, I know it, you don't have to, but recommend it. Vara <laughs> will walk in um, to the room upstairs with her tray of teacups and an owl on her arm. Ariana will notice it and blink for a second and yeah maybe take a look around and see if she sees Agrios or Adrastos and probably doesn't because the things around the back um and yeah I guess head up quietly with her tea when you walk in it turns its head all the way around so that it's looking over its back and looks at you and when you blink it it blinks at you and then turns its head back the other way I raise a teacup to it. <laughs> he kind of looks at the teacup and, and looks at you and, and blinks and it holds up a leg. Hold a finger out to it. And it touches it. Um, Tali, Tikaros, this is... Uh... A new owl friend that I believe has messages for us that I found on the window. When you say messages, it holds up its leg. I will take it back from Ariana. <laughs> Do I recognize the owl? As in being a particular thing you have seen before, I will say no. Yeah. Okay. Does it have a little thing on its leg? Uh, if you would like to take a closer look, you can. Sure, I'll take a look. Yeah. Uh, up underneath some of the folds of metal that cover it that look like feathers, there is a piece of paper stuck in there. Cool. Pull it out and add it to Vara. Um, Tigros is the one with an affinity with birds. How about you read it? And she'll hand it to Tigros. I don't know what it is about these birds. This isn't even a real bird. It's not have metal on it. <laughs> this is quite quite the contraption. What what is the what does the letter say? It's a little it piece a of paper. It's about uh, a half an inch wide, but it's very long, and there's stuff on it. But it is so tiny, you can't quite make it out. And the the owl turns and looks towards one of the walls, and a light comes on behind its eyes. Amazing. 
I put the piece of paper in front of its eyeballs. And I'm seeing how you're orienting it there. So you it enlarges <laughs> and puts on the wall, but everything's sideways. Oh, <laughs> silly me. <laughs> so you, take and you do this and you're going to have to kind of pan it across the eye to get the whole thing. But it is a message from Elitus. I will write the message down to where we can keep it legible. So I'll, I'll pull out some kind of parchment and start writing it down. Okay. All right. It says that they were on their way in, uh, but apparently the bridge is damaged. Uh, they've been getting reports of something to do with the gods. Uh, did Agrios cause a problem at the stadium? Uh, and then there's a space with a yes and no that you could circle one or the other <laughs> on it. Um, do you need help? Yes, no. Is everyone okay? Yes, no. Hmm. All right. Um, I, I would say Acreos is at fault, so I feel like we can do no for that one. <laughs> everyone is all right, but do we need help? Well, I don't think it would hurt. It wouldn't hurt. So no, no, yes. I think it's no, yes, no, actually. No, second. yes, no. I, <laughs> I'll double check and reason. <laughs> Excellent. All right. All right. So what do you do with the paper? I will reattach it to the leg. All right. All right. Was there anything else that we want to add to this? We, or should we write our own note? Do we feel like, oh, well, what if someone intercepts? Um, I think this is fine. It should be fine. Yeah. I will attach it back where it was. All right. And with that, the owl takes off and flies out the window. Wow. Elitus is, is quite the guy. I wonder where he got that. I guess he has Prime. Should we tell the others that we've heard from him? Or should we give them time to be on? I don't think any of either of them will want any sort of conversation tonight. That's fair. It's not pricing. Well, I hope you all like the tea. <laughs> <laughs> and <Barbell will> <laughs> uh, Ariana will sort of nod and sort of uh, kill the cup and uh, take it downstairs and wash it in the sink. Set it mm -hmm. aside and go sit back outside again. I'll just I'll just smile and immediately get one of the cups. I'll just be like yeah right right thank you thank you so much <laughs> and. Of I'll just spend a, some time kind of looking out the window, kind of pondering, maybe sometimes stealing glances at, at, at wondering how he would approach Tikros about asking what happened. But and besides that, he'll just drink tea and just kind of stay awake for a bit. Mm -hmm. Tikros uh, is doing little snores in the corner. She's curled up and she's just exhausted. He's had a rough day. Wow. I think Bar is going to go chill in the bath for a little bit. Is there is there like a personal bath? Sure. Or would absolutely. we have to go to the okay? Yeah, she, yeah. some yeah. somewhere where there's water. I think she there, there's a soaking tub. Tentacles down and yeah, she, I think she'd let her tentacles down. If, if nothing so if nothing else, there'd be the trough for the donkey outside. So either way, that works. I Bar would find somewhere with water no. and just kind of. If you rest. if you go to the trough of the donkey outside, do you find the uh, agrios? hanging out in the stable i guess maybe she would do that because the trough is probably the biggest I've, thing i've been thinking he's been out there uh ranting at the donkey can you believe he said that and <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think Mara would sneak down and kind of just don't mind me actually just so just you're I not just... that creepy after all oh vara oh um <laughs> sorry didn't mean to scare you I, I wanted to give you time alone, but I, uh, it's been a while since I've been in water and it's, 
it's important for me to get a soak in every now and then. <laughs> and she'll uh, just kind of slip into the trough awkwardly. And you can you can keep talking to your friend if you want. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, the donkey is backed up in the farthest corner that it can be, and its ears are. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be Agrius's friend. <laughs> well, you have been yelling at it and ranting at it for the last, you know. Oh yeah, it's true. That's hours, true. It's so. like I don't know what he's saying, but he sounds angry. <laughs> oh, no. oh, poor thing. <laughs> oh, we got a message, by the way, from Elitis. A message, really. Yes, he, he just wanted to check on us. I guess the bridge uh, into town was damaged by the gods fighting. Um, mm. But he just wanted to see if we were okay and need help. So we let him know that we were all fine, but his assistance would still be appreciated if he could get into town. I think Tolly and I were talking about going back to the Colosseum tomorrow to um, investigate. And, you know, for me personally, I feel a duty to uh, check on all the, all the dead. Try to properly bury them. Oh, right, right, yes. Well, we all have our duties to the gods, except some of us. Well, you have a reason for following your god, and as do I. I can only assume Adrastus has a reason for not. But we, we don't need to get into it right now. I, I think it was healthy, you guys, airing grievances like you did so we can wake up tomorrow and move past it and work as a team how did you come to follow athrio um uh, well i um it's a, it's a bit complicated <laughs> um i've never really felt that much of a connection to the god. Like, I, I spent many years on ships. I was practically born on one. Um, born to the sea, really. And, uh, well, my father, or at least who I refer to as my father, had, mm. had many books that he had collected from different travels, and I, I read a lot. And um, there were just a couple things about Atheros as I was reading about the gods that struck me, and I've, I've committed myself to him ever since. Very admirable. Perhaps, uh, perhaps he had some influence on you finding him in such a way. Yes, I, I like to think, uh, well, with the events of today, it's, it's hard not to feel, um, small and weak I, in, in a place where magic was was being dampened in some way and, and even then I, I my magics are mostly things that helped us at sea i had i had wind for sails i had water for the tides i i'm not meant to fight or to heal or uh, i've i've got what the ship life has prepared me for and um uh, doesn't translate to land well but hopefully i can my my fervor in reading and research can still be some use to to the brawn of of our group i i admire you in that way even if other people may think you're you're a bit bullish yes i'm well aware what other people think of me i've rarely let it bother me and you shouldn't let it bother you whether or not you feel useful i'm certain you are i in fact feel very certain that there must be a time that we will very much rely on your skills. Oh. Thank you. Life, I feel that Athreos must have prepared you for something important. I, I have a lot on my plate, I feel. <laughs> Quite a few people on my plate, but um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm happy to be journeying with you, Athreos. I, Sorry really? for pinning things on you, but I bet if anything, you see it as a challenge. And I admire that. <laughs> uh, I feel honored, if anything, that they are pinning the same things on me that they pinned on my god, Mogis. 
It is, it is a bit honorable, isn't it? Yes. I'm so glad to find a kindred spirit who sees things this way. It's very rare. Of course. Well, I, I think you and Adrastus have a lot in common. And uh, I, I don't want to harp on it. I, like I said, I think it's healthy that we, we talked about things and aired things out. And I don't know, I think, I think in the same way that you believe that I may someday provide a service, I, I think you all, the both of you, have already provided a lot. Perhaps to each other more than you know. Hmm. There's strength in the passion you both have. Yes, there is certainly strength and passion, but I cannot agree with his viewpoint that, that we, that lies or we make of them. There is so much out of our control. We are small and weak, as you have said. Well, that's scary for a lot of people. I find it comforting. Not everyone can be comforted by that. I think um, Tikaros today, when we were trapped together, it's it's not a too unfamiliar feeling for me. I've I've been trapped in uh, flooding flooding holes and and things like that. So it was stressful, of course, but I've never seen Tikaros like that. They're they're usually such a such a happy face. So. I think something specific was bothering them. I, I heard them referring to that name again, Tavi. I, I think we are all a very damaged people in different ways. Yes. Perhaps that's why we found each other. So uh, people, when they're hurt like that, believe what they must. I like to think what I believe is true, but... Yes. I've often thought th that the iron that comprises heroes is wrought in fires of torment. I agree. I'm going to interrupt for a moment. Uh, Vara, Agrios, please make a perception check. Will do. Uh, that is a 15. He, okay. 24. Ooh, All right. Um, I'm in the water. I'm in my element. <laughs> I'm like, e my tentacles. <laughs> As your conversation's going on, when you mention the name of Tikaros and Tavi, and you begin that part of the discussion, you hear a noise. It's almost as though someone was moving down the alley and tripped over a pail or something that was left in the alleyway. Not a moment's rest for our ragtag crew, and Vara will go ahead and kind of slip out of the water and, and go to investigate closer. She'll even oh, use yeah. her uh, uh, telescope to try to get a good look without getting too close and alerting them. Uh, Agri I I'm sorry to say, Vara, but Agrios has no uh, concept of such subtleties. He I rushes know. out of He rushes out <laughs> of the stable and goes galloping toward whoever it was. Understandable. <laughs> Bearing down on them. Well, she will. She will take her telescope out and try to look as quickly as possible before Agrios scares them off. <laughs> uh, Agrios, uh, as you are charging after him, give me an athletics or acrobatics, your choice. Athletics, it is. That is a nineteen. All right. And Vara, I know you were taking the telescope, so I'm going to let you have the same view that we get here. Agrios, as you round this area down the, the alley and you get to a point where you see a bucket that is actually tumped over and look ahead, you see as the back part of a black cloak, which you can just make out silhouetted against the sky, vanishes around the corner. So quite a few feet down the alleyway, something was apparently running. Uh, running faster than a centaur, apparently. He's going to try and give chase. All right. That's what we saw, Agrios. The, the man in the cloak. We, we have to get him. 
and fire I'm on it. Run as well. <laughs> I think I think I will go ahead and wild shape into draft horse to keep up with him. <laughs> okay. How fast do you move? As a draft horse? Um yeah. great question. Let me pull that back up. You know, I never expected horse to be the main go-to for Farah, but having another <laughs> four-legged hoofed character I mean, in the party, it's it's just been frequent. Uh 40 feet. Yeah, same here. All right. Cool. So we go yeah, so we'll, we'll be neck and neck. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Uh let's roll for this as you go charging after again, athletics or acrobatics. Ooh. Athletics. While they're rolling. Um about this time, the owl appears back in the window and lands on the uh the frame of the window and is looking around the room. I mean I'm I'm probably closest to the window, so I will go ahead and check out what is happening now uh, with the, the owl. So are you just going to approach him or what? I'll just approach. It's just like, got another message? And it will look at you and take a couple of side steps away from you. We're part of the same group. It's, I'm fine too. Hello, my name's Ptolemaeus. They're just... And out. It'll look at you, and it'll look at you, and then it'll kind of lean its way in and look around the room, and and then stand back up. And they're out, like I said, and s sleeping. And I would rather not bother anybody right now. But I could take your message, and it's going to take a couple of more steps away from you, which is kind of backing it into the edge of the window seal at this point. I'll just, uh, understanding wh where he came from now, I'll just raise a finger and I'll just be like, well, we belong to Elitus, right? We are all working directly under him. We're all on the same side. Ariana, are you still in the room? Okay. Uh, no, she's in the front steps again. Okay. Um, as you put your hand out to it, the owl will fly away. Oh. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> and um, which direction is the owl flying in? Uh, it flies out, and you can see that it's actually circling the house. Uh, she's looking for someone. And, yep. and then I will kind of turn one more time, see that Tikros is just completely out, and I will walk out and see if I could find uh, Ariana or Vara. Okay. I'm going to flip back to, them, to uh, Vara and... Agrio says they are charging down the way. Uh, how did your roll go? Can I confirm? Uh, 16. 16, great. And then, so whenever I'm in wild shape, I use the stats of the animal that I am, but I still have my proficiency bonus. Is that right? You use yeah. your intelligence stats, yeah, and then every, all the physical stats are the beasts. The horses. But yeah, your proficiencies. But I still have proficiency, right? Or Yes. OK. So then it would have been 14, and then with my personal proficiency plus two, so 16 as well. Okay. You guys tag along after, and you see, once again, the cape disappear around a corner a ways away from you. What is it? Sorry, you cut out a little bit there, Sam. Oh, Agrios would have just uh, yelled over to Horse Vara, what is this thing? And then I assume she would respond. She may. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> <laughs> she shrugs these big uh, draft horse shoulders. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. she, gives, she gives a little whinny. All right. So do you continue pursuit? Um. I mean, Agros has been challenged now. He's not going to give up. 
Yeah, I mean, I would, right. I would maintain pursuit. Okay. Well, as you continue to pursue around and you turn the corner where this was, you come to a dead-end alley. It's just three walls, and whatever ran in there is just gone. There is something very strange happening here. Far not. <laughs> hmm. Um, so it seems as if he's disappeared. Is there any kind of like tracking? Um, yes, you're that welcome to attack? track as a, as a horse if you'd like to. I probably <laughs> won't be a horse anymore if I'm going to track. <laughs> so I'll kind of go out of horse form and Oh, shake, shake it off. She obviously still isn't used to that. Um, and um, I can see if I can find footprints. That's how I right. discovered give me a, and Tali were okay. Um, all right, give me a survival check, and I'll be back to you in a moment as I go back sure. to the house. And uh, Ptolemaeus, she said you were coming outside to look for Ariana. You find her sitting on the front stoop. And uh, the owl swoops down and lands on a post near the two of you. That thing is not, yeah, that thing is not wanting to give me anything. So I figured they're probably looking for someone. You want to see if you, you could probably get some information out of them? Sure. And Ariana will hold a hand out. It will immediately jump onto your arm. Me, apparently. Uh, I'm going to check its legs. Okay. And there is another, well, there is a paper there. Okay. Pull a little paper off. And it will look around and, I guess, project onto the front side of the house because yeah. there's no place else really for it to do. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Maybe, maybe, maybe we go inside just in case there are wandering eyes or whatnot. Of course. And she'll get up and walk inside and there's the front room. Okay. So you put the message up. It says that uh, help is on the way. Um, Dracios, Prime, and I are going to have to make our way around as we cannot get into the city from the damaged bridge. That mm -hmm. will take us the better part of a day. All right. Well, um... Suppose we shouldn't go too far, although it seems they can find us regardless. I'm sorry, did that note say Dracius is coming as well? I did wonder that myself. He did not seem much of a get his hands dirty type. But well, my expectations of people and entities is apparently very off base, so who am I to speak? It's that, and also I just don't want it to. Uh backfiring on us. How so? The man doesn't really like me, and if there is a, a particular situation in which he could blame us, I'm pretty sure he will try to do so. Uh, I, I'm getting the impression that man doesn't like anyone, so even if you are a particularly disliked, um, he does at the end of the day seem to have people's interests at heart. But trying to get us killed in the same way. Hmm. Fair. Well, we have I've... evaded death at the hands of four gods, so I feel a town councilman is not quite up to the task. I mean, the gods weren't actually a attacking us, so... Yes, we've evaded collateral damage. That is... Ptolemaeus, you are a man that worries much, and I'm sure that has worked very well for you in the past. But I promise you, you we will be fine. We'll be careful. That I can accept. Um... I suppose, should we send anything back with them? No, I don't think so. 
I think it should be fine. Um, Ariana will find a whatever and put a little check mark next to it, wrap it back up, and send the owl out. All right, and the owl will fly off. And I will fly back over to Vara and Agrios and see how that roll went. Fifteen. Sixteen. What are we okay. rolling? She was rolling the survival. Ah. She was checking for tracks. Gotcha. Uh, you look and along... I, I have a, could I have assisted her, by the way? I'm sorry. Could I have assisted no, her she got or it. also rolled? You could have, but okay. she's got a 16, so... <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, as you look down, you can obviously see, see uh, eight set eight horf- footprints <laughs> from horses, uh, but you also <laughs> see you also see. I don't know. It's it's like one footprint is human, and the other one appears to be. I don't know some kind of an animal, but it doesn't. It it could almost be a satyr foot. But it's not right. There's something odd about the way that it's shaped. The other thing you notice is there is an excessive distance between strides. It's almost like this person was taking extremely long strides as they moved. I do I see anyone in the sky? Does it look like they were like running to like leap and take off? Since you ask this. Uh, you actually, as you look and you, you follow these in, you see where the feet picked up some dirt and you see the footprints running up the side of the building at the end of the alley. Oh, oh they, Address, look, do you see the footprints? If you follow, it actually goes on to the top of the building. What? Oh. How? <sighs> magic most likely or there's some kind of creature i'm unfamiliar with they they have hooves but they, they're longer stride than a i don't know you said they have hooves it's it seems like it but they're not like hooves i've seen before granted i haven't seen many hooves i've seen quite a bit <laughs> um yes. since i First came onto land a few times. I've seen yours. I've seen Tigris. So I, I have an idea of horse and satyr, and, and this is one I'm not familiar with. Do, do we abandon our chase, or do we try to take uh, take to the top of the buildings? I will never surrender. If we cannot simply leap to the top of the building as it can, then we must go inside find roof access from there. Can you fit? Yeah, I, yes, you can. Um, Probably. Do, what building is this? Do we know? Is it something that we could... You're inside in? of an, an alleyway, so at the moment you would not know where you are. You're kind of on the back side of these buildings. Hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, and she'll kind of just, using those survival kind of instincts and tracking, she'll continue to try to figure out where the front of the building is and enter. All right. That feels appropriate. <laughs> All right. We will come back to that. Uh, Tikros, we haven't checked in on you in a while. I assume you're snoozing in the corner. Yeah, that makes sense at the moment. I would say she's just completely out to it. Unless, you know, gets, she gets woken up by a noise or something happens. Yeah. Any dreams? Hmm. Good question. I'd say given the frazzled state of the day, quite possibly. I think she would be probably cycling through fuzzy, like snatches of memory, like rocks and darkness and a hand pulling her out and probably just cycling through various horrible things like that. Maybe an earthquake? Possibly an earthquake yeah. on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let's check in with Adrastos. Okay. So Adrastos um, would have beelined to the Red Room. He would not have talked to anyone. Um, he would have 
had a look on his face of like Leon and rage to make sure that nobody got between him and his destination. Um, he is walking at his full height with purpose. And to anyone who doesn't know him, which probably wouldn't be many people in this city, he looks like if you try to get in his way, he might kill you. Um, he makes his way to the red room and then he just kind of slumps down into one of the seats. And then he just puts his head in his hands and he just sits there for a minute. And then he leans back, reaches back into his pouch and pulls out the red um, wrap that was on his shield hand where now the gold was. And he's just going to look at it and he's going to look at his hands. And he's going to sigh. He's going to say, I don't know where you are or if any of you can hear me. But I made a vow when I passed my trial and became a Sun Claw. And I swear to you now, before my elders in Arescos, before all the Sun Claws, as I swore before, and now tears are starting to fall on this thing that he's looking at. It will not happen again. They will not take another family from me. I will not let what happened to you happen to them. I swear on my life and my honor as the last Sun Claw, it will not happen to them. And then he's going to fully break down and start weeping. As you are dealing with this trauma, you you barely hear the noise of the hoofbeats of two horses running down the street. And it's almost imperceptible as the footsteps run up the wall behind you and across the roof. And I think that's where we're going to stop for this week. And we will pick up that next time. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. I, I, I hope you got your taste of the gods for this evening. And uh, yes. everyone is, uh, <laughs> they fulfilled all of your wishes. Yes. <laughs> you guys got another four hours, right? Fine. <laughs> I'm I work at 2.30 in the morning, so probably not. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta spend some time to go and add into my notes that uh, Tolle hates mechanical owls. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> Character growth. They're yeah. incredibly <laughs> rude. <laughs> How dare he fly away from me? They seem to like everybody else okay. <laughs> are, are we sure we don't have another like half hour in us? Like, <laughs> <laughs> i i think i'm gonna call it for tonight i'm sorry but we'll, uh, we will pick up uh with this next week and uh you guys have been doing a lot of things uh you've been dealing with a lot of uh issues and i think uh you've probably gained enough experience that yeah. we're gonna let you level up now the way i normally do this you yeah. can go ahead and level your character but it won't take effect until a long rest because the way I normally do that sure. is long rest. You wake up and you're, you know, there. So, Got it. but go ahead and sure. look at your characters and look at doing that upgrade to the next level. <laughs> Z was saying, why aren't you a war horse? And I was like, cause I'm not level four yet. <laughs> and now, <laughs> now I shall be, yeah. uh, now I shall be war horse. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Thank you so much, Tam. Hooray. Thanks, Tam. Thank, Thank you, Tam. guys. Uh, it was lovely. Love the role play this evening. Love love the trying to figure out how to save uh, yourselves and let everybody else burn to death. I mean, great heroism. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> great heroism. What are you supposed heroes to of do ourselves? With what are you Not joking about? Yeah. It's very early in our heroic journey. We're still yeah. figuring things out. <laughs> we'll be heroes eventually. You we'll know? save people We'll be heroes later. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. 
All right. Uh, thank you, everyone who joined us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you here next week as we find out uh, what's going to happen when Var and Agrios make their way into the house. What's going to happen about the uh, bird that doesn't like Ptolemaeus and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And of course, the aftermath in Akros of a portion of the town being destroyed and uh, one of the great symbols of the town and also one of the uh, prized creations of one of the gods which is now lying oh. apparently at the bottom of a chasm. <laughs>